Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here or you've never seen my face before then my name is Lucy and thank you for tuning in on this video. Today I decided to cover some of the most requested things that I've ever been asked such as how to get a good blend, how to cut the crease and also how to get a good winged liner. I tried to break this down step by step just so that beginners or people who are just starting out in makeup could understand it as best as possible. So by the end, if you did learn something, please let me know because I'd really love to know if I've been able to help you in any way. But before we do that, please make sure you are also subscribed to my channel because it would mean the world to me if you could. So if you do want to see how I created this look, then please just keep watching. <laughs> So before we even begin with the eyeshadow, it is so important to have a good base down on your eyes for the eyeshadows to stick to. So I always like to go in with the P. Louise base. This is the shade number one, Rumour. This is the second or third lightest shade because obviously I am very fair skinned. So I always like to go for one that's quite light so that the eyeshadows can pop on top of it. So as you can see, I first just laid down the product using the same brush that I used to carve out my eyebrows and now I'm going in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills A16 brush and I'm just going to pat this into my lid in true P. Louise style. I find that using a brush to pat in the product as opposed to a beauty blender or a sponge really distributes the product how you want it to and it gives you a really, really even base to begin with. Um, with sponges, sometimes they can pick up the product and not give you as much um, opacity as I'd like so I just like to use a brush. So for the purpose of today's video I'm actually going to be using some sunset colours so going from deep reds to oranges and yellows just because I find that they are the easiest to show a smooth transition through the colours. Also they are my favourite colours to work with on my eyes. So if you follow me over on my Instagram or if you've ever watched any of my previous tutorials before you would know that my technique is always that I start with the darkest colour through the crease first and the darker the colour the smaller the brush. But my favourite brush for blending the first colour through the crease is the Anastasia Beverly Hills A14 brush. If you have seen any of my previous tutorials you would have seen me use this a million times before. This is my favourite brush to use in the crease because it is so small and so precise and really good at packing on that first colour. So on that brush I'm taking the shade Bestie from the P. Louise palette and I'm going to just start by tracing this just above where my natural crease is and then winging it out to the side of my eye. I always start in the middle of my eye so I can gauge where the crease lies and then I go through the inner corner and then eventually blend it on the outer corner. I think I've mentioned this in a previous tutorial, but when I'm blending dark colors, I always hold the brush near the end, just because I feel that that um, helps to apply less pressure to the brush and gives you a nicer, smoother blend. <laughs> The next shade I'm going in with is the deep red shade from the Sample Beauty, the Cult Palette, and I'm just going to take that on my Morphe M506 brush. This particular shade is incredibly pigmented, so I'm really not going to go too hard with it at all, and I'm really not taking it very far up either, because I still want to have room for the orange and the yellow above it. So when I'm blending, I like to use small circular motions, especially on the inner corner of the eye because I find that that's the easiest place to diffuse. Um, and when it comes to winging out the shadow on the outer corner of the eye, I just like to use windscreen wiper motions going back and forth because I feel like that diffuses the color the best. So the next color I'm going in with is orange and I'm taking the same Sample Beauty, the Cult palette, just the orange shade in that palette on my Makeup Addiction pencil brush. Again, I'm just taking this shade right on top of where I've placed down that red and diffusing that line. Say that I was clever, clever. Something I like to do within my blending routine, I guess you could call it, is I like to take it section by section. So I always start in the middle of my eye just about here and then I'll take it in the inner corner and then the outer corner like I did with the first shade. But you wanna make sure that each section is blended before going on to the next one, otherwise you're gonna be ending up with a harsh line. Just whilst I'm remembering, I always forget to mention that I never ever set my base before I begin to put the eyeshadows on top. So I do not set it down with translucent powder or with a neutral colored eyeshadow. I literally just use it tacky because I find that the colors, especially the darkest one first, will stick to that base best and give the most payoff. The final color I'm going in with is the yellow from the Juvia's Place Zulu palette on my Morphe E18 brush. 
Again, if you follow me on my Instagram or you've ever watched one of my Instagram lives, you would have seen that this is my favorite brush for yellow. I don't know why, I don't know what it is about it. I think it's because it's so small and so dense that it really packs on that yellow color and makes it vibrant. But this is my favorite brush for doing the yellow color on top. And again, just like all the other colors, take it section by section, working it on top of that orange. Finally, before we go in and make those colors more pigmented, I'm just taking a clean blending brush. This is the Makeup Addiction Controlled Blending Brush, and I'm just gonna run that through any of the harsh edges I have going on. Then I'm just gonna go back through all of the colors and all of the different brushes that I use through the blend, and I'm just gonna make sure that each shade is as vibrant as I want it, because sometimes the colors can get lost in the process. <laughs> So to begin cutting the crease, I know I've touched on this a few times before in some of my previous videos, but I always like to take a Q-tip in particular rather than a cotton bud because these have the nice pointy tips with some makeup remover on it. I use the Micellar Water by Garnier because it's the only one I have on me right now. And then I just take this Q-tip to trace the shape of my cut crease and get rid of the product underneath because sometimes when you can put the concealer on top, it just goes a funny color mixing with the colors. So I just like to get rid of it first. Again, with this step, you don't wanna be going too hard straight away because if you end up removing more than you wanted to, you can't go back from that. So it's always worth building up. I actually always take it a little bit lower than I intend to cut the crease just because I don't wanna go too far up and and then not be able to correct that. And then I just follow it on from my eye and flick it out at the side. So cutting the crease is again, one of the main topics I get asked about all the time. And I always say that it's so important to have the best brush that works for you. For me, I have tried many different brushes. I've tried small detail brushes. I've tried normal sized concealer brushes, but I've found that I actually work best with a large concealer brush. So this is the Zoeva 144 Soft Concealer Brush. This is actually something I began seeing from M -M 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 Mitchell on Instagram, I believe, and also the P. Louise Academy. They like to use big brushes so that they can pat in the shape of the crease rather than to draw it, which I found was a really helpful tip, and that is what inspired me to go for this brush in the first place. Alongside that brush, I like to take the P. Louise base in the shade Zero, which is basically just a stark white shade. I like to take this because I find it really brightens up the eye and also it's very, very thick and opaque. So I like that it's a very sharp color. So I'm personally quite good at manipulating my eye space. It looks like I have a lot of eye space, but I actually have quite sunken in eye creases. So when I look forwards, you can see that a lot of my crease just disappears into my eye. So for this reason, I always take the concealer a little bit higher, actually quite a lot higher than my natural crease, just so that when I'm looking forwards or if I look up, it's not gonna transfer and basically ruin all of the nice blend we have going on. So to begin, just mapping out where my crease is gonna go. I I always look forwards in my mirror um, and let my crease just naturally lie where it's gonna go and then I like to just dot just above that as you can see then I just go in and do the same thing on the inner corner so I let my eye lie naturally dot it there and then do the same just on the outer corner just there from there, it's basically just dot to dot. So I'm gonna take the brush and just press it into place joining up all of those lines and then winging it out on the outer half you know. Then with the excess product, just patting that in to the lid. Now that my crease is cut and looking sharp, I just wanna set it in place with a white eyeshadow so that it's not gonna to start to crease. So I'm taking the shade Charm from the P. Louise palette on my Anastasia Beverly Hills A4 brush, and I'm just gonna pack that on top of where I put the concealer. So whilst I'm here, why not squeeze one final little tutorial into this video. So I'm just gonna show you guys how I personally achieve my winged liner look as well. 
Um, my favourite to use is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Jet Gel Eyeliner. There is a few gel eyeliners that I really do enjoy, including the Sigma Wicked Liner and also the Morphe Slate Eyeliner. But I find that any gel liner will work well for me. I just used that gel liner with my Anastasia Beverly Hills number 14 brush. I enjoy using this for winged liner because it is small and I can get way more precision with it than a bigger brush just so that it's thinning out the product and also getting rid of some of that on the brush. That also helps to make the brush super, super thin so that I can get as precise of a line as possible. Again, I know this is something I've showed in previous tutorials, but I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth with this one, just because it is, again, something I get asked quite a lot. So I always begin with the center of my eye and I just place a little line there. Then the same with my cut crease and with my blending technique. I always start with the middle, then go to the inner corner and then finish with the outer. So I'm just gonna take that and keep working in small sections across my eye into my inner corner. When I'm at about three quarters of the way across my eye, then I'll go in and do the wing. So I'm just gonna start from the outer corner of my eye following my lower lash line. So if I was just to follow on that line and take it up, that is where my wing is gonna go. From here, I know that a lot of people will start on the outside of their wing and then drag it in, but for me, I prefer to go from the line above my lid and then take it out to the line because I feel like that that's just how it works, better for me personally. So now we have the base outline of the wing. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in and then I'll probably go off camera and clean it up until it looks the way I want it to. Now that my lashes are on, these are the Lash Stop Lashes in the style Monroe, and I've already pre-moisturized my face, so I'm ready for foundation. Today I'm taking the Maybelline Superstay Foundation in the shade 03 True Ivory. This is a really, really full coverage foundation. This is so, so nice for really oily skin, because um, it really locks in place and stays all day, like it says on the bottle. You should see the things we do, baby. Then I'm going in with the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer in the shade C1, just underneath my eyes. And powdering my whole face using my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. To warm up my face and bring back some colour, I'm taking the Morphe 9C Contour Kit and I'm taking this colour and this colour right here on my Morphe M527 brush, just going through my cheeks and along my forehead. And to highlight, I'm taking the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dream Glow Kit, taking the shade Wish just on top of my cheekbones and down my nose. Now going back under the eyes, I'm just starting with a black gel liner. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Waterproof Gel Liner. And I'm gonna go on my lower lash line and just in my tight line as well. And then I'm gonna go in with all of the same shadows as I did on the top, like always, and just bring them underneath my eye. So to finish off the entire look, just because I have something crazy going on my eyes, I'm just gonna do some nude lips. So I'm taking a deep nude lip liner and my Anastasia Beverly Hills Toffee Lip Gloss to go on top. So this is my finished look right here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from it. If you did, please comment below. I'm more than sure that I definitely forgot to explain something that was quite important in this video because I'm just quite ditzy and forget what I'm doing half the time. So if there is anything that I didn't cover that you would like me to answer, please comment below or DM me on my Instagram and I won't hesitate to answer your questions. Just one final disclaimer that I know not all of these techniques are gonna work for everyone, but this is just me showing you my way of how I do my cut creases and my winged liner and my blends. Please don't go thinking there is any right or wrong way to do makeup. If you don't do it the same way that I do, that is absolutely fine. I'm literally just here to show you guys how I do it in particular, because I get a lot of questions asking how I do it. Before you leave, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video if you did enjoy it. And don't forget also to follow me over on my Instagram because we are about 400 away from 50k, which is absolutely amazing. So I'd really appreciate if you could follow me over on there. Once again, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.